Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to the session. Mandibulise u nonsikelelo buzani. It's delightful uh, to know uh, that you're back on this program, nonsikelelo. Um, she is an official from the provincial treasury in the Eastern Cape, and uh, we both went to the same university. Uh, I'm reading her bio, which you can also see on the platform. Um, she's a budget analyst in the Eastern Cape Provincial Treasury, and she's also worked in SARS before. And she is has been working on a very interesting spending review, which is looking at uh, the Learner Transport Program. Uh, this particular spending review came up with a number of recommendations, and Nonsikilelo is going to be taking us through uh, uh, that uh, spending review itself and what the Eastern Cape has done with these recommendations. So uh, a very warm welcome to you, Nonsikilelo, and you've got about 20 minutes to present and we'll take some Q&A after that. So um, please enjoy the platform and feel very welcome. Let's hear from you. Uh, thank you, Jeremy, for that introduction and good afternoon to you, all political uh, leaders present in the meeting, HODs, all senior officials and everyone in the meeting. And thank you for joining the session. I will quickly upload my presentation. I will be presenting key findings of the Lena Transport Expenditure Reviews that the Eastern Cape Province undertook with the assistance of GTEC. I will also be presenting key points of our final report. This will include uh, the recommendations and the conclusion as well as actions taken. We will start by looking at uh, Lena assistance in South Africa. This assistance came about as a response by the Departments of Transport and basic education to uh, problems of long distance that um, which some learners, especially those who come from remote and rural areas have to travel to get to the nearest suitable public school. Therefore, the, learner, the National Learner Transport Policy sought or seeks to address the issue of um, access to education. Now coming to the Eastern Cape, the province has over the years been challenged with closing uh, the gap between demand and supply for learner transport services to all deserving learners in the province uh, against other competing service delivery priorities as well as budget limitations. Affordability is and has been a major contributor to this challenge. As um, most of us would be aware, the Eastern Cape is a predominantly rural province. And because of this, um, some areas in the province have relatively low population density levels, and this makes public transport expensive. However, it is in these predominantly rural areas where the need for transport services is the greatest. This is because uh, learners from these areas, more often than not, must not just travel long distances to get to the nearest public school, but must also cross um, rivers and forests, so uh, the issue of safety also comes in now. And therefore confronted with uh, these challenges and the need to ensure that uh, needy learners in the province have access to education, while the fiscal environment continues to be constrained, it became critical to assess whether learner transport program in the province is implemented efficiently and is achieving the desired or intended purposes. Therefore, an assessment of key cost uh, drivers was done to see the cost effectiveness of learner transport across all six, six districts of the province. And the main area of inquiry in the assessment was to see whether vehicles on contracted routes were run at full capacity or not, and to establish the cost implications of running vehicles uh, below full capacity. We also looked at the, align at the alignment of distribution of services with the learner transport policy across the six districts. Um, uh, and we also know that uh, in the province, the, the learner policy, the provincial learner policy says that a priority is given to the most, 
to the kids, our learners that are coming from the predominantly or most rural areas. Uh, now I'll start with um, the key findings. Of course, our exercise started with the sourcing of data from the Eastern Cape uh, Department of Transport, where the learner transport function resides in the province. And this part of the exercise was the most time consuming part, starting from the sourcing of data uh, to cleansing it or cleaning it and uh, getting it ready for analysis. Uh, three sets of data were made available by the Department of Transport. The first data set was the best data, uh, but we didn't find it useful because it just provides total payments made. And then uh, the second data set was the register of payments. This data set was also found not to be useful uh, because it only provides um, service provider names and the related payments. And the last data set, which is, which is the set that we used, is the monthly data uh, is the monthly trip data, uh, and this data provides, among other things, the contracted uh, routes and kilometers, number of learners allocated per route and per vehicle, as well as weekly payments made over the period reviewed. Um, just a minute. Just one minute. <laughs> okay. Cannot see properly now. What we found was that the, 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 the data sets, uh, the monthly trip data is divided, each month is divided into five weeks. And the two last weeks of each month, it showed less than full um, operations as um, maybe two or three a week, days in that week were actually um, operated. Therefore, we, we removed uh, this data to minimize um, distortions. We also found that uh, outliers in our data, and these were also excluded to minimize distortions. Um, the size of the data was extremely large, and is it, it is captured on Excel, um, thus exposing it to human error. And furthermore, this data is not uh, kept at a central place, but is kept by a few individuals. And when they leave the department, the data lives uh, with them. Uh, coming to the proof of delivery forms. Uh, we did undertake site visits and we found that our reliance on this um, is not necessarily helpful uh, because um, Okay, I think I missed something there. Okay, let me go back to uh, historic uh, non-financial data. This data was not kept at a central place as well. We did not find all of the data from the department and we had to source some of it from the Department of Basic Education. And the proof of delivery forms, uh, were not, uh, we found them not to be useful. We, we did some site visits where we find out, found out that these forms are not um, completed on a daily basis as required. And thus, uh, and thus uh, they are not uh, reliable in, uh, in verifying the actual services that were, were rendered. And this exposes now the, the, the system to payment of services that were never rendered in the first place or services that were never uh, rendered in line with, uh, with the contract. And also the risk, it exposes the system to a risk of collusion with, uh, of the service providers with school principals. Um, we also looked at the payment model. This was done to, 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 to test or to check the cost effectiveness of the, of the services provided. As, um, as the formula that is used shows, the costing model is based on two components. Uh, the vehicle capacity as well as the distance covered, where the vehicle capacity uh, uh, component is deemed to be fixed and the kilometer capacity is, is the variable one. Therefore, this means that service providers 
are paid um, on both the size of the vehicles used as well as the kilometers. Uh, the payment rate is, is determined by using a predetermined rate card that is revised annually. And as, as can be seen in the rate card, for both 18, 19, and 19, 20, which is the, the, the years that we looked at, you'll find that the cost increase with um, increases in distances. However, we also found that costs also increase with um, the size of the vehicle, despite the fact that this um, component is deemed as a fixed cost. And then we actually did this exercise by, um, in fact, this, 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 temp, this slide will show you uh, an example of Amatole district and how we actually did this. Okay, let me pause for a minute. Okay, this, this, this table, if you look at the top part of the table, you will find that in, in 1819, uh, when we look at the overall usage of vehicles, in 1819, 469 total transactions uh, were provided from the original data. Uh, but then because of outliers, we could only analyze 358 routes, focusing only on um, full weeks. In, in 1920, 530 transactions were in the original data. But uh, after we did um, eliminated the outliers, 441 routes were analyzed. And we, we said um, routes that are faring on average less than 80% of the allocated learners were regarded to be operating below full capacity. And those are faring 80% uh, to 100 of the allocated learners were regarded as operating at full capacity. So in this table, taking the Amatole district, about 43 of the 358 analyzed routes operated below full capacity in 1819. And about 88 of the 441 routes that were analyzed in 1920 operated below full capacity. At this point, we focused on the routes operated below full capacity. Um, if you look at the bottom part of the table in 1819, an amount of 7.4 7 million was paid to service providers. And in 1920, an amount of 10.1 million was paid. Now, as shown in the, tab in the table, payment, the payment model used uh, pays vehicles at full capacity. It assumes that vehicles are run at full capacity. And it does not um, consider the actual learner numbers that were transported. So now, in 1819, that, that the average uh, cost per lena was 601 rand. That was the amount that was paid. And if you compare this to, to, the, to the amount that would have been paid if actual lena numbers was taken into consideration, the amount paid would be 286 rand. Uh, so this shows that the assumption that vehicles are run at full capacity is expensive. Also in 1920, um, 10.1 million was paid, with, uh, which translates now to 324 rands paid, uh, pay, 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 average paid per lena. And then if, it, if now the actual lena's ferret was uh, considered, 186 would have been paid. This further shows that for both years that the costing formula used is expensive as it assumes that vehicles are run at uh, full capacity. It also shows possible savings that could be realized if the formula were to be revised to be more cost effective. And of the conclusions that we made from this was that the current costing model is expensive as it assumes all vehicles are operated at full capacity and does not consider the actual number of Lena's ferret. Furthermore, it was um, 
concluded that the inclusion of the vehicle capacity component in the formula plus the 6% annual rate increases in the rate card makes the services expensive and this could negatively affect sustainability of services against competing um, service delivery obligations. Therefore, a revision of the formula could yield savings across all districts. The, the formula also could be revised to be based on kilometers only. And furthermore, the kilometer rates also could be um, reviewed and be compared with normal taxi rates. However, more research is required before this can be done. Uh, we also concluded that the use of our spreadsheets to capture large uh, scholar transport data exposes the data to human error and the high reliance on school principals to accurately complete the proof of delivery forms poses a risk of collusion between the school principal and the vehicle operator. We also uh, concluded that the service dis services distribution favors the relatively less rural districts contrary to the provincial scholar transport policy that prioritizes learners from deep rural areas. Uh, and, and then we made our recommendations, which we divided uh, to short, medium, and long term. In the short term, we recommended that um, the department has an opportunity to move away from relying on spreadsheets to record and keep learner transport trip data and financial data and consider designing an automated system. We also recommended that um, the department could design a system that would assist in the proper monitoring of daily services rendered by service providers. And then moving to the medium term, we recommended that um, the department to revise the expensive payment model that assumes all vehicles are operated at full capacity and consider using only, only kilometers operated in the costing formula. And when the budget allows, the department could consider prioritizing learners in more rural areas by keeping learner numbers constant in more urban districts while increasing numbers varied in the more rural areas in order to align with the learner transport policy. In the long term, we said the possible savings identified could be used to find the gap between the demand and supply of learner transport services and ensure that more qualifying learners benefit from the program and thus improve um, access to education. These savings could also be used, we recommended, to procure an automated system that would help in recording key financial and non-financial data and thus help in improving efficiencies in the implementation of learner transport. So the action plan basically reiterates what is in the conclusion or recommendations. That is to move away from the manual system that is currently being used and procure an automated system. And this system would help in recording of key financial and non-financial data. And um, another action that could be taken would be to revise the expensive formula to only consider kilometers and thus help in improving efficiencies in the implementation of learner transport. The possible savings identified could also be used to find the gap between the demand and supply for, learn for learner transport services and ensure that more qualifying learners benefit from the program and thus improve access to education. And we, and another action that needs to be taken is just to, to improve and emphasize on spot checks in the, in the verification of data. Now coming to the implementation of the action plan. As already alluded, in the short term, we recommended um, that the department moves away from relying on spreadsheet to record and keep a learner data and consider designing an automated system. The department is, is, is the, the, the department is currently developing a learner transport system that will assist in the digitalization of the end-to-end -end pro process. And the system has the following capabilities among others. It stores records of participating schools, learners, routes, pickup points, and it calculates distance. The, the, it also stores vehicle compliance data, such as licenses, 
It also stores a relevant rate card and utilizes the formula based on the rate card to calculate the cost of trips. And at the end of the month, the system generates a verified invoice based on activity of the operator. And this mobile app that the drivers uh, need to have links back to the system in real time for all drivers to track their movement during the fairing of children. Okay. Now, uh, the challenges that have been faced in the development of this uh, system. Currently, five out of six development stages have been com completed. The plan was to close the project by the end of February next year. However, the department has experienced delays in the deployment of the system due to data integration issues uh, by the, depart the, the EC Department of, of, of Transport. Uh, these are uh, delays in providing access to transport to SASMs for school, learner and route data. And there are also delays by RTMC in provided access to inatis for verification of compliance documents and monitor their expiration. In the medium term, we had recommended that the department should revise the expensive payment model that assumes all vehicles all vehicles are operated at full capacity and consider using only kilometers operated in the costing formula. Currently, the department is benchmarking with other provinces in this regard, and it's also awaiting the outcome of the ongoing National Lena Transport Review, and there are no challenges to report on at this stage. We further recommended that when the budget allows the department could consider prioritizing learners in more rural areas by keeping learner numbers constant in more rural districts while increasing numbers varied in the more rural areas in order to align with the scholar transport services. Currently, uh, the department shared the reports that we the reports that we did on expenditure review with the Department of Education uh, because the Department of Education is, is responsible for the selection of qualifying learners. So uh, even with that one, there are no challenges to report at this stage. In the long term, we recommended that uh, savings that could be realized from a revision of the formula could be used to find the gap between the current demand and supply for learner transport services, and also ensure that uh, the qualifying learners that are currently not benefit also can benefit from the program and thus improve access to education. Uh, in terms of progress on this one, there are no savings yet to be identified because the formula has not been revised yet as the department is currently doing the benchmark exercise and also awaiting the, the current review of the transport at national level. We also said um, these savings could be used to procure an automated system that would help in the recording of key financial and financial data and thus help in improving efficiencies in the implementation of scholar transport. Again on this one, because it's based on the revision of the formula, there is no progress to date and no challenges to report at this stage. I think I ran through my presentation. Uh, this was um, the last slide. I uh, would welcome questions and answers or even points of clarity where I ran through the slides. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Nsiki. Um, I just loved uh, listening to you and looking at the slides where you had so much information on conclusions and recommendations leading to actions and leading to the implementation of the action plan and where things are at. So I think it's a delight to see 
uh, a spending review evolve from understanding what's going on to what you're going to do about it. And I also thought that the way in which you touched on some of the data challenges, um, perhaps some of the implementation challenges, and also how you're tracking um, uh, progress. And of course, you know, with your, uh, I'll, I'll be a bit selfish here, but you know, your HOD was here before, so I'm sure he'll be interested in supporting all of these uh, reforms and keeping them live because you want those uh, implementation challenges on your action plan to be addressed. Um, I also found it fascinating how you identified, you know, how you revise the formula and how expensive assumptions can be. And then what can you do with some of the savings when you change the assumptions? So uh, please join me in thanking and congratulating Nsike and her team for such an interesting and exciting uh, spending review. Um, so get the emojis going. There we go, Nsike. I hope you can see all the clappings and thumbs uh, coming up on your screen. Um, let me just uh, talk to some of the comments that are coming through in the Q&A. Um, we have a, a, a statement, Nsiki, from Raymond Maleka, who was asking about the data that you looked at. Um, and what, is it not a little bit dated? And did it not uh, read uh, data from the COVID period? So maybe you can just respond to that. And then, um, yes, appreciation for your presentation. And also... Then, uh, also from Raymond, uh, Raymond Maleka, who is saying, well, what about having a government fleet? Uh, would that not help with some of these challenges? Um, and that's, uh, I suppose, a broad question again around, you know, what is more cost effective in sourcing or outsourcing of some of these uh, services? So, Nsiki, let's, let's ask you just to respond to those questions around the data. Um, and what are your thoughts, actually, on whether one should look at a government fleet as opposed to using... Uh, outside providers. Ntiki, back to you. Th thank you, Jeremy. Uh, regarding the data, whether it is old and, um, and not uh, data from the COVID period, uh, we recall that there's, um, this analysis is based on historic data. So you taking your past expenditure to see what the trends have been and also to be able to, to, to say if things don't change, this could be uh, the... the, the the issues that we will face. So the data that we used was um, 2018, 19, and 1920, 2019, 20. So we used data for two years because of data availability. So we were limited to, to, to those two years. So it was before the COVID period, which started in 2020. And then uh, coming to the second one, on the use of government fleet, I think it could be a, a, an option, but um, as, a, as a province, we're also thinking of um, maybe treat um, this the way, same way we're treating um, school nutrition and stuff, and basically allocate to schools because uh, there are issues with uh, payment to service, to service providers that the province is currently experiencing. So we're thinking of um, just... Uh, doing a study on that one and seeing if the, the best option would be to, to allocate to schools instead of the department transacting with the service providers. Thank you. Thanks, Nsiki. I'm just checking if there's any other questions. Um, so, Nsiki, that's really interesting. The Okay, so we've clarified the data issue. Um, you've got two years pre-COVID and you were looking at trends. And of course, wouldn't it have been wonderful if you could have looked at more years? But I know that a data availability and the quality of data is a real challenge in doing spending reviews. And this is something that is getting better and better as we refine uh, data sources. Um, and then, uh, of course, isn't that interesting that one starts to look at allocating an amount to a school to be able to then get its own transport or nutrition, or uh, I, I believe even, I suppose, uh, uh, the LTSM might even be an option. And that, of course, is a whole new thing one could look at and look at piloting and costing, and as you say, you're doing a study. So this uh, spending review is also out, uh, outlining a whole lot of additional options that we could look at in terms of better service delivery, <coughs> excuse me, a better service delivery at a better cost. So, um, dear colleagues, I think we have 
come to the end of Nsiki Buzani's presentation on uh, a fascinating topic that uh, the Provincial Treasury of the Eastern Cape has been looking at. Um, all the other provinces, I'm sure you are very interested in what they're doing because you are facing the same issues. So, of course, Nsiki is available. If you click on her profile, you could uh, connect with her. Maybe you want to have a chat in the lunch break. Maybe you want to have a table. Maybe you want to see if she's in the fluid lounge and uh, chat to her there as well. So this is what we're going to be doing over lunch. Please do stay engaged on the platform and please join me in thanking Nsiki so much for a wonderful presentation and some really insightful conclusions, recommendations and the delight of getting these into action and keeping a track on the implementation plan. I think we'll all be interested to see how this goes, whether they get to revise the formula and the assumptions and get uh, some savings from the spending review. So thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the lunch break. We'll be coming back at two o'clock on the dot and we will be joining the next session, which will be, I'm sure, one that you're all very interested in. It's incredibly topical, public service uh, uh, personnel analysis. Um, on a public policy uh, and Anthony Altbeck will be joining us and taking us through that presentation. So thank you all very much, everyone. We'll see you back here at two o'clock.